is more than enough. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Amen. More than enough. No matter what it is that you need in life, remember, he is always more than enough. He demonstrated that to the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, what there was not enough. Not enough to eat. There was scarcity everywhere. Then they brought him into the wilderness area. There was just enough. Remember the manna came up. It was just enough for that day. But that day came when they entered into the promised land. And that became the day where they had more than enough. God's interested in your blessing. Wants to let, make sure you know today that he wants you to have more than enough. Why? So you can be a blessing to somebody else. Who say, God wants, God wants to bless me in the city, in the city. and in the field. in the field. Bless going in. Bless going out. Bless going out. I'm, the head. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Not the tail. I have everything I my God has for me. Has in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 How many Bibles I got in the house? Lift them up. Say that with me. Lord, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I'm going to hear the word of God. And I'm going to be changed from the inside out. My mind will be renewed to what the word of God has to say. And the word of God is stronger than any force in this world. I thank you, Lord, that I have ears to hear and I have eyes to see and a heart to comprehend what you're saying today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Glory to God. What a blessing to know that we have God's word. It's an even greater blessing to know that when we pray and we seek him, he hears us. And this week, this week, the Sunday, we're going to start our new series called God Hears. And I put that on your front of your bulletin so that you would know and remember that it's so important to remember that when we, that's the reason we pray. We're not just shooting words out in the air. We pray because we have a God in heaven that hears. Not only does he hear, he responds and he acts. He responds to words of faith. Amen. Because your words are containers that hold your destiny and they move you towards your destination. Does anybody have somewhere they want to go? Yes. I mean, it's good. Maybe you're in a good place right now, but God always has a higher level that he wants to bring us. He wants to move us up always. He says he's the glory and the lifter of our head. No matter where we are, God always wants to move us higher and bring us up into higher places in him. And it's so important that we have to always remember that. Amen? Turn to Jeremiah chapter 1 for today's message. Jeremiah chapter 1. This morning I was thinking about my grandmother who lived to be 104 years old. Precious, precious grandmother Cora. And I was just thinking about the day that the whole family gathered together in Grand Caillou, Louisiana. That's right uh, in Terrebonne Parish. How many people know where Grand Caillou is? It's sort of south of Homa. I grew up in Homa, Louisiana, and I'm a Cajun girl. You know, like, like they say, I <laughs> I know how to, you know, I know how to shuck oysters. I know how to peel crabs and crawfish. I know how to cook a few things when I want to, but I don't usually want to. <laughs> I'm real good at, at making reservations and, uh, and warming up stuff. After you leave the restaurant, you have leftovers. You've got to be able to warm it up. But my, my grandmother, Cora, was a great cook and a precious woman. I remember we were at her, her celebration. They rented the, the, the center, the hall, because we had a huge family at that age. She had, like, I think seven children. Was it seven, Christine? Seven children. My father was her oldest child. And... Um, all the kids had lots of kids, so it was a big, big gathering that day. And I remember that someone in the family, I don't know who, they, they decided to write, a, put a little pamphlet together for the family, and they wrote a story out, just a little short uh, par couple of paragraphs about her beautiful life. And I remember she really got angry. This beautiful, sweet grandmother was feisty. She got so angry because of the one, one statement that was in that write-up. And they said that uh, 
Lawrence, which was my grandfather, Lawrence took Cora to be his wife. She said, he didn't take me. We had a church wedding. <laughs> she wanted everybody to know she was a godly woman. She didn't live in, you know, they didn't, he didn't just take her. No, no, no. She wanted to set the record straight. My mother, my grandmother understood that words are containers. And she wanted everybody to know that, that what the facts were. And she rep her life. She was a godly woman, was always going to church. She was always praying, always singing. I remember one time uh, she came up to visit us uh, here at the, at the office. And she had a bandage on her wrist. And at that time, I think she was 90 five or something like that. My mother came with her to show, us our, show her our office. And my mother was walking a little slow. So she said, I didn't get out of the way. I, I'm trying to get up here. So she passed up my mother on the stairway. <laughs> and then she went to Jesse's office and she showed, I think that's when this happened. And she showed him the, the, the ace bandage. She says, I just want you to pray for me. And so Jesse just got to get out the word Jesus. He said, Jesus, yeah, that, she said, that's enough. And she unwrapped it and... Praise the Lord, God healed her and touched her, precious woman. But your words are containers that hold your destiny and move you towards your destination. When you know you prayed and you've asked God, you can know that it's done. Amen. You don't even have to wait to how you feel or how things look. You can know that because he said it and you know he heard you, you know it's done. Because your words are containers that hold your destiny and move you towards your destination. So we need to be declaring what God has said, right? We need to be speaking and saying what he says. Why? Just because so that it'll get into our heart and, and it'll go, come out of our mouth and then go back in our ears and we could hear what God has really said about it. Because why? We live in a loud world. There's a lot of other voices that are always going on. That's why it's important that we speak what God said. Amen. It's not always easy to get someone's attention. They must be willing to set aside everything else and to listen. I know that's true because when I talk to my husband, he's generally looking all over the place. And I just, he knows that I'm aggravated because I roll my eyes or something. Maybe my eyebrow hits this hairline. I don't know what happens to my face. But he says, no, no. She says, I heard you. You want me to repeat what, what I said, what you said to me? And sometimes he gets it right. And sometimes he doesn't. But regardless, I always say, I don't care whether you hear it or not. I want to see your face. I want to see your eyes looking at me. When I, I want all of your attention. I don't want half of it. Because sometimes you can hear the words, but you don't get the, the meat of what is being said. Right? I don't want him to misunderstand. I want all of his attention. Well, when someone's willing to silence everything else so that you can hear you talk, that is really a privilege. And that's how we talk to God. We can talk to God. Why? Because he listens. He does. When someone else, no one else will listen, you can know that God will listen. You can pour your whole heart out to him. And don't even worry whether you get the words right or say, pronounce it wrong. I say Parmesan or Parmesan, Parmesan all the time instead of Parmesan. My husband laughs at me every time I say it. I, can't, I don't know why I say it, but it just got locked in the gray cells. God will never make fun of how you speak or how you say or what you forget. Why? Because he knows your heart. Jesus, the Bible talks often, he said how Jesus, knowing their thoughts even, sometimes you don't even have to speak it, but he knows exactly what's in your heart. And he wants to hear you express your heart to him. And he's always ready to listen. He's always ready to hear. You can always talk to him because your voice matters in heaven and it changes things on the earth. Amen. Your voice matters in heaven and it changes things on the earth. Amen. 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 Because God takes you very seriously. Do you want to be taken seriously, people? I mean, don't you really? You want, if you say something, you want everybody, you want their attention. And, and sometimes that's difficult today, especially in the day with iPhones. You know, you're talking to people and they're looking underneath, I do it too, I'm, I must admit. You're looking underneath, seeing if there's any messages. Checking things. But that's, a, that's we should, she should be given. God, God wants our full attention when, we're, when we come to, the throne, come to him. And, and the same is true with other people. When you enter into his presence, the attendants in heaven turn to hear your voice. Woo! You a VIP. 
very important person in God's, in God's eyes. And he says, when you enter his presence, everybody in heaven turns around to hear your voice. I love that. You don't need a fear that you're going to be ignored. Even if you stammer or stumble, even if you have, what you have to say impresses no one, it always impresses God. Amen? He listens intently, carefully. And your prayers are honored as, actually as precious jewels before heaven. So you may not understand the mystery of prayer, but you don't need to. Because God's word makes it very clear that actions in heaven begin when someone prays on the earth. Actions in heaven begin, action, it says actions in heaven begin when someone prays on the earth. That's why Jesus said, pray that thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. God he wants to get involved with our life every single day. Jeremiah chapter 1 is a very powerful passage of scripture. We're going to read beginning in verse 4. Just read four verses today in the first part of this message because it's about a man named Jeremiah, a young man. And uh, he, the word of God came to him. And he said this in verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, I'm going to read in the Amplified, came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am only a youth, for you shall go to all whom I shall send you, Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Jeremiah had a destiny. He was called to speak God's words to his generation. There are a lot of young people in the house today. God has called you to speak his words to your generation. If you're old right now, God's called you to speak his words to your generation. Each one of us has a destiny, and God has put his words in our mouth or in our heart, and it's supposed to come out of our mouth. And when it does, it changes things. The Bible contains God's words to his children, and those words are is going to be what's going to move us toward our destination. Amen? Turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, the Bible says he, on, he often said, I only say the things that my Father says to say, and I only do the things that my Father says to do. So he must have heard God speaking. You know, and I know that we, 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 some people have a problem with saying that you heard God. God told me. Oh, and, and, and in this church, we don't have that trouble. But we know it's a fact that God speaks, and he speaks to hearts, and he changes things. Amen. I'm just, God has spoken to me so many different times, sometimes audibly, but most of the time he speaks to my heart. And I know exactly what to do. I'll never forget that time we were driving along the causeway and they had started a, a, one of those frog strangling rains, as they say. Couldn't see the front end of the car. It was, it was so heavy. And I had a God-related thought that came to my, into my heart. I said, I have enough of this. And I just started speaking to the rain. And I said, I command you to stop in Jesus' name. And instantly, the rain stopped. Amen. That one moment was so important. We were, we were in, a, in a critical situation. Jesse and I were driving across the causeway to go on the North Shore. He was going to be preaching in a tent meeting of all places. But God had supernaturally heard my word. In fact, I believe he gave me the words to say. And when I spoke, heaven heard it. And because of that, something changed on the earth. We need to be speaking to this earth. Amen? The moment we start hearing news reports about bad weather, we start talking to it. We start talking to it the moment it raises its ugly head. And we say, we know we draw the bloodline. And we start speaking and saying things because we know that heaven hears us. And we want to agree with heaven that all God's will, God will be protecting us. Because it's his will that we'll be protected. Amen? Jesus knew how to pray while he was on the earth, and his disciples watched him move in the miraculous. They, they don't, you don't hear a, a, a part in the Bible where the disciples said, teach us how to heal the sick, or teach us how to multiply that food, or teach me how to go fish and get that money out of the, out of the fish's mouth. 
You, the Bible doesn't record that, but it does record the, the disciples asking them, asking Jesus, teach us how to pray. Apparently, they watched him. They watched him spend time, go uh, get alone with his father and spend time talking to God. And because of that, they recognized that that was the source of his power. So often we neglect that part of our life. And, and it's because the enemy sends distractions. He sends uh, uh, messages to us to, uh, different ways or another to, to help us to make us get discouraged. But God wants us to brush off brush off our, ourself and, and step up right into the, in the front and pray exactly and, and stay firm in him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, you're so powerful in heaven. Heaven, heaven right now is listening to the words that you're saying. When you say amen, he said, look, she's getting it. If you say hallelujah, they say, oh, look, he's got it too. And, and I like it too when you respond to me. <laughs> God loves it. Hallelujah. Let's, this is not a spectator thing. This is, we participate with heaven. Amen. And all of us go a whole lot farther when we connect together. Yes. Hallelujah. I love it. Hallelujah. And Jesus was such a powerful man. In Hebrews chapter 5, are you there? I love it what it says in the Amplified Bible. It says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up definite special petitions for that which he not only wanted but needed, and supplications with strong crying and tears to him who was always able to save him out from death. And he was heard because of his reverence toward God, his godly fear, his piety, in that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. Notice that God uh, heard Jesus, and, and Jesus offered up special uh, definite petitions, not only for what he wanted, but what he needed. So he was always having a dialogue with God every time, every, no matter what he needed. I love the, the message translation of Matthew chapter, uh, Mark, excuse me, Mark eleven twenty four. It says, that's why I want you to pray about everything, small and large. Pray about everything because you will get God's everything. Amen. So we need, don't need to leave anything on the table. We need to just talk to God about everything, amen, and put it in, at his feet. And we don't need to carry the care of it, but we can know that he will hear us. And because we know he hear us, we have it, amen. Uh, let me see where we're at. So the word doesn't say that Jesus' prayer was heard because he was the son of God. It says it was heard because he, of his fear or his reverence for God. So what that means is you know that God himself can handle no matter what it is that you come across. Amen? So that's what it takes. It takes faith in what God has said so that you can pray and touch heaven with your faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more of the word of God that we hear, the stronger our faith will become. Amen? So that we can appropriate and grab hold of everything that God wants for us. We don't need to be playing around, right, man? We need to get back, get right into the forefront of what God is doing and begin to speak to non-existent things. Talk to those mountains. Talk to the sickness. Talk to the problem. You know, that's a faith project. And when you do that, you can change the situation that you're going through on the earth. It may not come overnight. In fact, usually it doesn't. But it will begin. And God, heaven is looking to hear your voice saying what you want. How many people have that want list? Don't forget to keep looking at that want list. How many people have actually scratched off something that was on that want list already? Look at this. Half of the church has already been scratching off some things. I have too. God has done some, and I have more on my list. In fact, I keep adding to it. You can do that, you know. I'm giving you a license. Because God will show you more things that need to be added to the list. Why? Because he wants to fulfill them. He wants to bless you. When speaking about prayer, John Wesley said, it seems God is limited by our prayer life, that he can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him. Isn't that something? You know, it's hard, to, difficult to think that our creator is limited by the creation, but that is so true, because that's just the way God created it. That's the rules that he set in place on the earth. And he gave authority to mankind in the earth. So we have authority in the earth, and he wants us to exercise that authority and enforce his word right here on the earth. 
Amen? You've been deputized, whether you realize it or not. Deputized. You are an honorary deputy of heaven. And God is listening and wants to hear what you're saying about your situation. Many of you are in a strategic position right now, and you may see things that no one else will ever see. So in, unique to your situation or unique to your family or to someone else. And when you hear about things, it's not just so you can hear it and put it on the shelf. You hear it so that you can pray about it, so that you can talk to God about it and see it changed. Because the Bible tells us that, that we can pull down strongholds. Amen. We can cast down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against God. No matter what's going on, if it's, in, if it's a problem in your school, it's a problem at work, it's a problem in your checkbook, <laughs> it's a problem in the house, a, trouble, a problem in the weather, no matter what the problem may be, we know that we can go to God and he will hear us. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that gives me great comfort. That gives me, gives me great incentive to stay on my knees, to keep praying. I don't always pray on my knees. Sometimes I pray sitting down in a chair. Sometimes I pray walking up and down the house. Sometimes I just pray in the car. Sometimes, I, no matter, I mean, there's no limit. I remember hearing the story about John Wesley's wife. I think his name, her name was some, some great uh, evangelist's wife. And she had like 12 kids. She couldn't hardly ever find a, a moment alone. But they said that she would put her, her apron over her head and she'd just pray right there. You can find a place to pray if you really want to. If you really don't care what other people say, you can find it anywhere. And just pray and talk to God and knowing that he will hear you. Not only will he hear you, he will answer you. I found so many great verses about that. Psalms 80, 78 verse 41 says... No, that's a different verse, excuse me. Psalms 145, verse 18 through 19 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. So God will hear your cry. He will, give you, he will deliver you from trouble. He will deliver you from whatever it is that's giving you a problem. But we need to first cry out to him. Amen? You know, it's so amazing. There's things in the Bible that tell you about doing that. So you say, well, God knows what I need. The Bible says he knows what we need before we even ask. So you always think to yourself, well, why do I need to even ask? Because God wants to be invited. You ever invited somebody to your house and uh, they came and uh, they felt so at home. Didn't that make you feel good? Well, they sit down and they're just comfortable. But if they come in through the door and they just like, it looks like, like they're not sure if they want to be there, it's different. If they're hesitant or it looks like they're, they're looking at their watch or they're looking at their iPhone and they're ready to, to leave. But you want somebody that comes in there that's comfortable and ready to stay and enjoy themselves. Of course, you want them to know when to go home too. <laughs> Uh, my husband used to do that. We had people, when we first got saved, and we lived in this little tiny house in Houma, Louisiana, I remember people would come over from the church and visit, and sometimes he just was ready for them to go. And he had a unique way of telling people when it was time to leave. He would say, well, let me let you go. <laughs> and everybody would just kind of look at him, and he didn't even get it. <laughs> so you just telling them to leave. He said, oh, well, that's okay. He said, but I'm tired. I'm, ready to, I'm not ready to let you go. <laughs> you know, and he, my, uh, my, my daughter dated someone that would come over to the house a lot, and, and, and we'd, say, look, we'd say, it's time for him to go. It's time for them to leave. And so we had a verse for them that says, withdraw your foot from your neighbor's house, lest he weary with you. <laughs> but I found out that God will never weary with me. He's never a short of words to pray, and if I yield to the Holy Ghost, he will pray through me. So often I, my, my own language fails me, and I don't know what to pray, but I, that's when I, I enter into that groaning season. You know, the, the Bible talks about how the, you can pray with groanings so much that, that you can't even utter them, but the Holy Spirit moves in and through you with, with that, uh, you know that? Because something's, there's a warfare going on in the heavenlies. I can tell that as many of you have hit that, that mm, I'm not having it that way. 
and the Holy Ghost just moves upon you and there's like a charge that comes in you from heaven and it's like a, it's like a lightning. You know when lightning bolt comes from heaven, it's got to find a bottom. It comes down, it's, you know, sometimes we see it in the air, we don't know where it hits. But when you're in the presence of God and that lightning strike of God, that light, lightnings of God, you know when you went into his presence, the Bible talks about when you saw his presence, there was lightnings. So when that, that, sh that lightning bolt comes down, it's got to find a home. So I said, Lord, here I am. I put it in me. Put it in me. There have been so many times when it just charged and it came into me. This morning, this, just this week, Jesse and I were, were looking at YouTube. So our ministry is expanding into YouTube, and I was looking. I decided to, to get a subscription and to look into it. And instead of just once in a while, I decided to go in and look at it. And I noticed we have over 47,000 subscribers to our YouTube channel, and we've done very little. So we're going to start doing a little more. So I was watching one of his older videos. I forget which one it was. But I was listening to it, and I was remembering the story that he's telling of what we went through. And it was like it was yesterday. All the things that God has done in our lives and how, many, how powerful he has been in our lives over the years. So, you know, there's, in God, everything is like that. It's, I mean, there is no time when you're in God's presence. Even though some of these stories and these, these experiences that we've had serving him over these 40-something years has been so powerful, it's like it was yesterday, because that's we're really eternal beings, and God creates us this way. And so we need to stay sensitive to him, because he's always ready to do a now thing. He's always looking for somebody that he can send his, his presence through, and it'll go right through you, and then you'll speak it out. And you know, when you speak like that, that's heaven hears that. Heaven hears it. I'm telling you, it's a different way of speaking. Because the faith begins, I think it was F.F. F. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is known. So when you know it's God's will, it's going to change the way you speak. If you never knew that it was God's will to heal, how could you ever approach him and say, Lord, heal me? But once you read it in the word, it's settled forever. I don't care what my circumstances say. I don't care what the affliction or the problem or the, the doctors may say. All I know is if God said it, it must be right. He said, I'll take sickness. I'll bless your bread and your water, and I'll take sickness out of the midst of you. He says, I, am, I will bless you. He says, I, I bore your sickness. I took your, your, your diseases. He says, by my stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. He, everywhere he went, he went preaching, teaching and healing people. And as a result, people's lives were totally radically changed. Whole cities came out to hear him. And he spoke words of life. Amen. We are, that's how we, we, you know, we were created with the word. God created us as, you know, our physical bodies. He created us with the word. He spoke and man was created. And so the same thing that created us is what's going to sustain us. The only thing that could sustain us or help us to really thrive in life and have a fulfilled, beautiful, spiritual relationship with God is the Word of God. Because without it, we're just going to be just existing. Just these little flesh creatures. These little earth suits that are nothing without the presence of God. When we have the presence of God in us, we can move in a whole different realm. We can speak to things. We, can, we have authority in heaven to speak. He says, if two of you agree as touching what? Anything. Anything. Think about a thing that you need to be talking to. Talk to that sick thing, that debt thing, that the broken thing, the relationship thing that may be a problem in your life. But no matter what the thing is, Bible, the God, God tells us that we can speak to it. Amen. And we can change that thing once and for all. Amen. Amen. So because your voice matters in heaven and it affects things on the earth. I remember when I was growing up, I had a transistor radio. There's young people probably don't have a clue what that would be. But um, I wanted my own transistor radio. And I remember my mom got us one for Christmas. And I could tell because the way she wrapped it. It was underneath the tree. And I remember finding it. I was so glad when I found it that day and I tore the paper. It wasn't in a box. She just kind of tore the paper where the, I could feel around. 
I felt where the little knob was. So I turned on the power, and I felt another little knob, and I tuned it in, and I could hear, hear the... And I was so glad that she'd put the batteries in it already. <laughs> now, we don't have that today. We all have iPhones and all kind of other stuff. But back then, in the olden days, I had that. I remember going to bed a few nights, even before Christmas. I think she knew what we were doing. She was just glad we liked it. She was happy that we were enjoying it, I'm sure, I think. <laughs> anyway, but uh, it, was a, it was a transistor. What well, the thing was that you had to, you had to tune it in. That's how it was in the old days. Sometimes you got static. <laughs> and you just had to fiddle with that little button a little bit. Sometimes there's interference when we're, when we're seeking God about some things, right? And we can't give up just because there's a little interference. A little static on the scene. You got to just take, just listen. You just have to just make that little adjustment. Sometimes we, we have forget to make the adjustment. We just walk off. It would have been pretty funny if I'd have just walked off because that little <laughs> came across. No, I'm not finished. I got, I got more God wants me to give you. Well, God has more he wants to give you. And when the interference comes, and when the static of life comes to try to distract you off of your purpose, you need to just stay tuned in. Stay tuned to heaven. because Yes, because heaven sending out a strong signal. I'm telling you what, it's pumping out from heaven. It's going out onto all the earth. His word's going out into all the world. I mean, it's still, it's like this huge echo in the earth. He's still, he's getting sending it out there. He's just looking for some receivers. He's looking for somebody to say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Amen. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth so that he may strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. God's looking for hearts that are completely his. And when your heart is completely his, you're going to be talking to him. And he's going to hear you because you're going to talk in faith. And when you do that, lot, things change. Just recognize that it begins to change from that moment. You may not see it in the natural yet, but if you keep on walking, you're going to get the result that you're praying for. Amen? Because nothing's ever impossible. Amen. Give the Lord a great hand clap. Hallelujah. Turn to John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. God's looking for some receivers. And you know what? He's always tuned in. He's always got the on button on. He's always got the notification button on. I know that when I come up to speak, and if I'm using my iPad... I always make sure I put my little button on uh, airplane mode because that way I won't get any interruptions yes, while I'm preaching. I, I don't want any interruptions. So there's times when you don't want any, but God's, his, his notification is always on because yes. when you call and when you cry out to him, he's always there. Yes. He's always listening. And we need to, I know you have heard this, but you need to be reminded yes. because if we know he's always listening, then that changes our perspective. If you know he's always there, his receive, he's always on, his notification is always on, it's going to cause you to speak up yes. and say whatever it is that's on your heart and cry out to him. You, because your voice matters in heaven and it affects things on the earth. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 tells us, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that... If we ask anything, say anything, anything, according to his will, he heareth us. Think about that. Anything. Jesus said, if my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. So once we get our hearts right with what God wants, it's, we're on a whole different playing field. This is the confidence that if we have, that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Think about that. If we, if we know that he hears us, Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Right? If we know that we know that we know, that we know that we know. It's a settled fact. I know he hears me, so therefore I have whatsoever that I asked him. Right? Whatsoever. That's, that's everything. Everything. God didn't put a limitation on it. We put a limitation on ourselves. You know, because he says, whosoever will, will ask him can get it. So I like to say it this way. I'm a whosoever, and I'm going after my whatsoever. And I believe I'm going to receive it. My, some of my whatsoever is you. I'm calling you in. I'm calling you to be stronger in God, to grow in him, to have every need, every desire, every vision you have, every want on your list to come to pass. I pray for you every single day because I, I love you and I want to see you grow and get stronger in God. God loves you. And there's no, no way that he could stop loving you. Even when you don't get it right, he still loves you. But he wants you to get it right. And he can help you to get it right when you look at him and you keep your eyes focused on him. Amen? Amen. This is the confidence. That means the assurance, the settled fact. I know with confidence that if I would call my mother today and I'd say, Mama, I feel like eating a shrimp stew, she'd be hitting the pots today. I got confidence in that. If you have never had a good Cajun shrimp stew, you have not eaten. In fact, we would add potatoes and then we'd put it over rice. So it's like a double carb whammy. <laughs> shrimp potato stew over rice. A lot of great Cajun dishes, but she just had a knack with knowing how to fix it and the flavor. I can taste it now. But I have confidence because it's her desire to do me good. She wants, if that's a whatsoever and I, I called and asked her, she would do it. Now that's my natural mother. My father in heaven has an even stronger desire to meet every single need we could ever have in this life. He's just looking for some, some whatsoever, some whosoever's to speak up and say whatsoever it is that's on your heart. You know, it's like packages are up in heaven. I mean, there's all these gifts that God's already prepared. He says that he's already given us everything that's needed, everything that's necessary to live godly lives have already been given to us. It's our responsibility to open them up and take it out like I did with that, that transistor radio. I took it. Mother didn't even get mad. God's not mad when you reach out and grab something that's already yours, that he's already prepared for you. It belongs to you. Amen. I think God is ready for us to raise up, rise up in our hearts and ask big because he wants to give big. Don't put any limitations on your asking and no limitations on your receiving. Amen. I'm going to read a couple of more final verses. Psalms 18, verse 6. You don't have to turn there. It says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. I love that. Verse th Psalms 34, verse 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivered them out of all their troubles. There's several places in the Bible where you hear that. Well, if he will hear them, why won't he hear you? Why won't he hear me? We need to believe that God will hear us the same way that he heard those that cried out. The same way he heard no Moses, who when Moses cried out to him. He, and he, the same way he heard even Jesus. Because the Bible tells us that, that God loves us as much as he loves Jesus. That's hard for our natural mind to comprehend. But his very own son, he loves us the very same way. And because he loves us, he wants to bless us and give us everything that we need to live in this life. He didn't just create us to, and put us out here on the earth so that we could struggle and barely get by. He wants to bless us with his presence. He wants to bless us with, with, with anointing to, to, to pull down strongholds, to lift up people. Amen. To, to walk into places that, that need to be walked into and pull down those strongholds and tear and open up people's eyes to the truth. God is such a good God. Amen? He loves us all so very much because that's what God does. He, he's, he hears us when we cry. And we just want, I just wanted to put that in your heart today to remind you that God is always listening. 
I know sometimes when you say that, you go, ooh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> And so often, we, but he is always listening and he forgives. If we ask, he's always faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So our words are so important. They're containers. God hears our words and when we speak what he has said, it transforms not only our lives, but it transforms the world that we live in. Amen. I'm looking at some world changes in the room today. God is going to speak words to your heart. He's already talking to you, telling you what, what you need to be saying. I remember when I first started reading the Bible, I didn't have concordances and all these helps, but when I would find a Bible verse that I liked, I would write it down on a, on a spiral notebook, and I would find out things that God was saying to me, and I would write them down, and it made it some more real to me. So it's important to do that, to continually search out the Word and, and, and re realize that it's like, it's jewels, it's, it's treasure, Amen? And when you find treasure, it's, it's valuable to you. And when it's valuable to you, start speaking it and declaring it and expecting it. God is so good. Amen? Anybody, God, been good to you this week? Let me see your hand. He wants to do even more good for you. He wants to bless you and, the, and touch everything that you touch to prosper. He wants to fill your mouth with his words. He wants to anoint you to go into places that you never thought you'd go into. He wants to bring you to a higher place in him. You're always growing because why? He's listening. He's hearing you, and he wants to touch you today. Amen. Everybody bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your precious word that's here. Lord, I thank you that you hear every word that we say. Hallelujah. Lord, you even hear those words we can't speak. You hear our hearts before we even speak. You knew us, like you said for Jeremiah, before he was even born, before he was even in his mother's womb, you knew him. And Lord, in the very same way, you know us. You know us. Lord, I thank you. You know before we even ask what we need. But Lord, now we ask. Lord, we ask for your presence to dwell in this place in every heart. Lord says there's going to be a new level of hearing in this house. He says, because you know that I hear you, because you know that you know that you know that I hear you, I'm going to open your ears and your spirit to hear in a, in a higher level. So refining process. He says there's a refining process. He's removing the distraction. Removing the distraction right now. Some of you have been trying to hear from heaven, trying to figure out what's been going on and you could not, you can't hear, you can't understand it. But God says he's removing that distraction. He says, I know the, my, I know the plans that I have for you. He said, God knows the plans that he has for you. He says, they're not of calamity. He says, but he wants to give you a good end. He has a good plan for your life. He must but the distractions have come in and pulled you off course. But God says he's removing those distractions. He's gonna show you, he's gonna speak to your heart and show you exactly what needs to be tweaked, what, where the little, the little knob needs to be moved, where the refining has to happen. He he's fine-tuning you right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for, oh, a divine deposit. He might call a spiritual. He pokosa growth in this house. Oh, Lord, grow us up. Hallelujah. Grow us up, oh God. Lord, that we won't be affected by just things in the natural, but Lord, that we'll hear with our spiritual ears, that we won't be discouraged when we hear things in the natural because we'll know by our hearts and our spirit what you're really saying. And Lord, I think that when we begin to say what you're saying, lives are going to change. Our lives are going to change. Supernatural restoration begins right now in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hi, I'm Kathy Duplantis. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. God bless. 
This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.